I'm your host, j You can find me on Twitter at Bill Street Blue. That's at B-E-A-L-E-S-T Blue on Twitter. The intro for this episode of the j Show was Ball Man by Young iPhone, produced by DJ 20 Minutes. You can find Ball Man by Young iPhone, produced by DJ 20 Minutes, on Young iPhone's album entitled The Adventures of Juggio, All Freestyles. You can find The Adventures of Juggio, All Freestyles, on Ramy SoundCloud profile. That's Ramy, R A M I, on SoundCloud. This episode of the J Bo Show is dedicated to the memory of Johnny Kemp. Kemp was found dead on April 16, 2015, at Jamaica while vacationing and scheduled to perform at the Tom Joyner Foundation Fantastic Voyage Cruise. Johnny Kemp was an R&B singer best known for his 1988 hit song Just Got Paid. Just Got Paid reached number one on Billboard's R&B chart and number 10 on the pop chart. The song also earned a Grammy nomination for Best R&B Song. Just Got Paid was covered by boy band NSYNC in 2000. Johnny Kemp's contribution to music is very much appreciated and he will be missed. And last but not least, my guest on this episode of the j Bo Show is the real king of Memphis. The best worst rapper alive, the best worst rapper in Memphis. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Jason the Hater Harris. Jason, welcome to the j Bo Show, man. Thank you, sir. I'm very appreciative. No doubt. Uh, do you remember that track by Johnny Kemp, Just Got Paid? Of course I do. It was uh, my partner used to play it uh, on Fridays, Friday mornings when I was at the uh, University of Memphis. We wake up, we woke up to it, to thank God it's Friday, and then uh, for, uh, Johnny Kemp just got paid. Just got paid. <laughs> no doubt. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> So, Jason, you're from Memphis, right? I am. You're from I am. Memphis. Uh-huh. So, what was it like growing up in Memphis? Uh, well, you know, uh, I, you know, as far as, uh, far as what what I went through, I mm-hmm. was a, a football guy, an athlete guy. So, you know, in the summers leading up to school, it was, uh, you know, football, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be hot ball in the street, uh, taking the football to school. It mm-hmm. was football after that, you know. Uh, uh, I always did some type of some some type of sport. So you know, I, before 
when I was young, you know, mm-hmm. I ain't really like basketball. I wasn't mm-hmm. no good basketball person. I'd just be outside playing, getting dirty, on riding the bikes and so forth and so on. Okay. About middle school, I started doing basketball. So either be playing football, playing basketball, and watching the MTV and, B- and BET. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what's the first time you heard 3-6 Mafia? 3-6 Mafia was a very big rap group in Memphis. They are very big in the foundation mm. of Memphis rap. And whenever I talk to somebody who raps from Memphis or somebody who's a rap fan from Memphis, I always like to get their impression of uh, the first time they heard 3-6 Mafia, if you can't remember. All right, well, uh, truth be told, uh-huh. uh, I was into rap and I was into... Uh, I was, you know, I was into gangster. Uh, when Gangster Pack came out, I remember No More Suspect. Mm-hmm. I remember Ball and G, uh-huh. and I remember Three Six. But truth be told, I was never really a big Three Six fan. Really? You know, I had uh, partners that was around me. They they liked it. They listened some, to some of the tapes. Mm-hmm. When Mr. Styles came out, we was had a track meet. I remember they were they were playing and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I, I was a. Uh, it, it was different for me, you know. I, you know, it's just something I, went, I really wanted into. Really, you know, truth be told. Oh know. man, so you were more into A Bar and MJG. I, I was more so into A Bar and MJG and Gangsta Pat Fives from being from being from Memphis. But I was mm-hmm. into rap. But I was more so. You see, I went to. Uh, I, I was more. Into, I went to the Fresh Fest when Fresh Fest came to uh, to the uh, Mid South Coliseum with Run uh-huh. DMC, who right. did the LL. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I kind of was on. I, I, I was on I was on rap, but I was kind of on some on, on some different stuff. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. So when did you discover that you first had a talent for rapping? Uh, well, that's a that's a tricky question because uh, I mean you know I, I can I can rhyme. I'm more so of a an entertainer. You dig? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I I could always play around. You know, when I was in the uh, first grade, I remember me and my brother making this uh making this tape, he was beatboxing and I was rapping just freestyling, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I you know, I, I did it then. Uh me and my partner, uh around ninety ninety seven, ninety eight, mm-hmm. just playing around. Mm-hmm. We say, man, you know, well uh, my, my, my 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 partner had this karaoke machine with a microphone uh-huh. and uh I got some instrumentals on tape. They just make a tape, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let's make it's called a group the king and I you be the king and I'm gonna be I. Okay, all right. <laughs> and we and we and we did some songs called The King and I, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So but when we was writing I had I write I wrote I I wrote his stuff and then I wrote mine, you know what I'm saying? It sounded pretty decent. I can I can I I, I can rhyme a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. it was all right. And the only reason I thought it was all right because uh, you know, in around ninety four, ninety five, you know, I started thinking in my opinion, mm-hmm. other folks rap they weren't really rapping too good, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I'm a hip hop fan. Yeah. And I started getting disgruntled, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I mean I just kept on kept on rhyming. It went from me doing a tape to me hearing about an open mic mm-hmm. in Prince Chicago, me mm-hmm. going down to the open mic and rhyming at the at the, at the open mic. You know, once I rhymed on the open mic mm-hmm. on, on on the mic, it's you know, I was able to do it. I thought man, I, I can do this a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I see what it, what, what it's gonna do. Okay, so it kind of stemmed from you like listening to rap and being a fan and saying, you know what, I'm not hearing what I like, so let me make the kind of music exactly. I want to hear. Exactly, exactly. And then cool. I, while doing that, I came across some people in, in the city mm-hmm. who were kind of on the same, same, uh, who, who were cold, you know what I'm saying? Like you saying, like it was, it was three six baller MG, right. uh, MJG, uh-huh. but I. Going to going out, I discovered it and found out there was another underground movement that a lot of people didn't know about. Mm-hmm. That was when I met a uh, uh, Fathom Nine uh-huh. and uh, DJ Kojak. Uh, and they had a whole crew called MOS Masters of Sound okay. Underground, and they and they and they've been at it for a long time uh, before I got on. Okay. And then the Mighty Quinn mm-hmm. and the guy named General MacArthur. These folks were super low underground, man, mm-hmm. but was spitting. Really? Yeah, they, they were spitting. Yeah. I never heard of them, man. Man, when I tell you, uh, you have you heard of? If you, I don't know if you heard of DJ Kojak. He used to DJ One Hundred and Seven, but they had the name sounds familiar. Man, when I tell you, like this is when uh, Precious Cargo was a uh, was opening down there, and they had like poetry. I, I was to hear about, but I never really went. Uh-huh. But I went down to the open mic hip hop, uh-huh. and these these folks kind of and I, and, I, and I got the history of. Of them being around, they've been around a long time. Cause Kojak worked with all, you know, three six. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he was around in in that time as well. But these right. folks were kind of spitting, mm-hmm. spitting, and they still spitting to this day. But yeah, that's how I, that's how I uh, came. That's what I came up on. That's what's up, man. That's what's mm-hmm. up. What was your original rap name? Cause like I know a lot of people that that have rap, and like they usually 
eventually they settle on one name. Yeah. When you first started rapping, you first started getting the feel for yourself and your style, you go through like maybe like two or three name changes. So what was your like your first name or well, you know, some know, of your early names? I you know, I know a lot of folks used to have they uh, come up with different names. I could never really come up with one. When I was in elementary playing around, I should say that something like Jason J. Mm-hmm. But after a while, I just man, I'm just Jason Harris. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I just just Jason Harris. And the only reason I I just uh, uh, and later on I, I added the hater. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Jason the hater. But I never really had a, 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 a you know a, 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 a elaborate name. I, I could never come up with one. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. But tell me how you got the name Jason the hater. Uh well, you know this uh see a lot of people come to me say man, I, you know hey, that's your alter ego. No, it ain't my alter ego. Mm. That's what I am. I'm a hater. That's what you do. You a hater. If you, you hate like it, if you like it, I hate it. <laughs> well, you know, they just, uh, it came about a couple of different ways. Uh, mm. When I started substitute teaching, mm. and I'm around the kids and all these uh, folks talking about their favorite athlete and their favorite uh, rappers and all that type of stuff, you know, uh-huh. they'll say, man, that's a call. I was like, man, I'm dude, sorry. Uh-huh. He's slow. Right. Uh, coach, man, you just hate. Uh-huh. I'm like, I am. And then when the songs was coming out, play it, why you hate, play it, hate it is. Mm-hmm. So, uh, don't hate the play, hate the game. Mm-hmm. Everybody and their mama was doing it, so I just decided to be the one that everybody was talking about. Uh-huh. I should start doing the battles. This would be a battle, battles on Wednesday on Madison. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I used to go and I signed up. But I, one day I said, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to sign up as the hater. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when, so, so when they called my name, we got such and such versus the hater. Mm-hmm. And when I cut over there, I said, man, I hate this dude. <laughs> Whatever beat the DJ played, man, no, I hate that beat. Uh-huh. Just hate everything. <laughs> cool, man. Mm-hmm. So, Jason, what do you think makes a good rapper? Uh, um, well, what I think makes an MC. Okay, is, let's uh, take it there. Okay. What's the difference? What's the difference between an MC and a rapper? All right, now, uh, through my experience, some rappers are people who are in it based on kind of what they see on TV. You know, they just rapping because they think it can do something for them. However, Mm -hmm. they don't really have an understanding of the live show, the importance of the live show. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have an understanding of more, the crowd don't owe you nothing. You mm-hmm. don't owe you anything. Right. So when you up there, man, y'all not gonna mess with me. Y'all get loud. No, no, you make them get loud. Right. You know what I'm saying? The MC, mm-hmm. uh, you move the crowd. Mm-hmm. You you do that. Whatever it is that you bring about, don't beg them to get loud. Don't beg them for the love. You know what I'm saying? You go out there, and you make them love you. Right. Uh, now also, I believe a MC. I believe a rappers mm-hmm. don't necessarily research the art, the genre. You understand? Mm-hmm. They don't know about the people prior to, you know what I'm saying? They might know about somebody they heard coming up, but they don't take the time. It's easily accessible online. Right. They don't take the time to really understand the genre. Like, I think hip-hop is the only genre that can that does not respect the pioneers or mm-hmm. the elders like it should. You know, right. you won't see a singer that don't know about Luther Vandross or Patti LaBelle, right. you understand? Mm-hmm. Or even prior to then, they won't know about folks in Motown or Stax. They're going to know about that. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of rappers out that don't know about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they don't know about uh, the Juice Crew. Mm-hmm. They don't They don't, They don't. don't know about uh, 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 Crush Groove mm-hmm. or B, B Street. They don't even know, that, know those things, you know right. what I'm saying? Stuff like, in my opinion, need to be requirements, yes, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so it's just, I think uh, rappers are folks who, who rhyme, Kind of like uh, you know whatever's trendy. Mm-hmm. Don't have an understanding of being original. Mm-hmm. You know some people are rapping. Everybody got if it, the, 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 it's, it's a style out right now. Everybody do it. The trap rapper. Yeah, well, trapper rappers. Whatever. I don't know what they call uh-huh. it. I just know that folks come doing a similar style than what they hear on the radio right. or whatever or somebody else doing. Mm-hmm. But you know if you real MC or rapper, you would know mm-hmm. that. You had to have your own style. You can't. It's biting. You can't be biting nobody else. You can't. They don't. They never. They didn't respect the folks that did that. Bite that bit. You know right. what I'm saying? You got to come mm-hmm. up with your own stuff. So you know. They That's interesting. That's interesting. You say that. Uh, about a month ago, I read something somewhere saying that the Rolling Stones mm-hmm. were going on a brand new tour, and the Rolling Stones been around since the '60s, and they're still like going out performing like all their old stuff. And people still love it, and people who do rock music. Pay homage to the Rolling Stones all the time. Exactly. They keep their, their music alive, keep their, their reputation alive. But you wouldn't see a rapper today, like a new rapper, 
give a shout out to Cool Mo D. Exactly. Or give a shout out to Big Daddy Kane. Exactly. And it's wild. I was reading an interview that Young Thug, you know Young Thug, mm -hmm. the rapper yeah. from Louisiana. I was reading an interview that he did with uh, with Rolling Stone magazine. And he had a quote, I'm paraphrasing, but he had a quote somewhere in there where he said that he would never buy a Jay-Z album because Jay-Z is older than he is and he's not going to be talking about stuff that he can relate to. And I was like, that's, ridiculous. that's, that's ridiculous. crazy for a new rapper, a, a baby rapper fresh on the scene to say that you would never buy a Jay-Z album because you can't relate to him? Ridiculous. Now, that's in my crazy. opinion, it all kind of cool. I think it's all, it's just, you know, in my opinion, all this stuff is by design. You understand? I mm -hmm. think, I think uh, they push a lot of young rappers. They mm -hmm. push rappers who are young of age, and mm -hmm. they and they. I think all this kind of coincide as far as the genre of hip hop. Mm -hmm. They don't respect the elders, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the kids that's upcoming now mm -hmm. don't necessarily respect the authority nor respect the elders. Right. All right. It's not. Uh, the genre of hip hop is not really encouraged for you to show appreciation mm -hmm. to your elders, uh, to, uh, to show appreciation to your elders. Uh -huh. So that it goes from the music mm -hmm. to real life. We got a lot of kids who don't know how to don't know how to talk to older people, mm -hmm. who don't respect older people, who don't respect uh, you know uh, 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 elder figures. Uh -huh. All right now, uh, but it, and it's not even shunned upon. You see what I'm saying mm -hmm. now. They put money behind people like Young Thug. They put mm -hmm. money behind all these young folks who really ain't talking about nothing because mm -hmm. they know that this is the most influential music in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but music-wise, how can I be influenced by a young dude who ain't never been through nothing? How can mm -hmm. I? How can you take the most powerful music in the world, which is hip hop, mm -hmm. and tell me that you're only relevant if you're a young dude? Man, it's not here. This this hip hop is mine. You understand? Mm -hmm. I came up on this. You can't tell me I got to give it up to some young dude. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. You know mm -hmm. this. Uh, he, he didn't come up on this. He ain't got enough knowledge about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, he don't even show appreciation for this. Right. But the people who got money gonna put by, put money behind them because they know they're not they're gonna have an influence, but it's not necessarily gonna be a good influence. They ain't gonna really talk about nothing. Mm -hmm. He ain't never been through nothing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're gonna let they're gonna let people four or five people shine, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, talking some ignorant stuff. Right. And then I, all the all the all the masses gonna think they can go do the same thing, but mm -hmm. only a small number gonna make it right. doing that same way. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I don't. It's just kind of, you know, what I'm saying? I, you know, they they gonna they gonna play on the radio 24 mm -hmm. uh, seven. Thug this, thug that, a whole bunch of different girls this, mm -hmm. uh, rob, kill, drink, smoke, whatever. Right. They, they, they all that stuff by design, in my opinion. Hmm. Let's go back to a lighter note. Let's go mm. back to the, the kids you work with. You said you were substitute teaching. Mm. Uh, I've been to one of your shows. I think I went to your the first show that I saw you do. It was like four years ago, 2011 sometime. And I noticed in your uh, in your live performance, sometimes you play the dozens. <laughs> or, we, unless we, or as we call them in Memphis, we call them yeah. checking. Yeah. We check a lot. And yeah. you do that a little bit in your show. And I just wanted to know, what's the, the best uh, joke that you heard? The, the, best, be the best dozens you've heard? The best dozens I've yeah. heard. Either in your show or in class or at school, uh, I don't know. We got some. I, our kids, I, my kids, man, they terrible on jokes. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I got some. I've come across some good jokes. Five, five dozens. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, you know, one of my favorites. Is, favorite is, uh, you know, your your neighbor so so cross eyed. When she cried, the tears rolled down her back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's yeah. Good one. What's your favorite venue to play in Memphis? Uh, now, it used to be the Complex. It used to be on Madison. The Complex was... Mm -hmm. uh, was that in Midtown? It was, uh, it was 704 Madison in Midtown. Okay. Uh, but they uh, closed, and then they made a deli out of it. But it mm -hmm. had the backstage. It had the good sound. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, now... I don't necessarily have a favorite. I'm, I'm just appreciative to have somewhere to, to be in. I like uh, I like the house of M. Tansy, uh, on my Stanley Cameron on the twelve eighty nine Madison. Okay. I like the high tone. Uh, mm -hmm. I like Juicy Gems. Um, mm -hmm. uh, those places I do more frequent than any. Um, uh, but uh, I, uh, RJ's. Aji's Bar and Grill mm -hmm. got a pretty got a pretty good setup, and uh, Brinson's downtown mm -hmm. on Madison. Uh, it's, been, it's a lot of places that I've been able to go, 
And I kind of, as long as the sound is good, I'm good. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I, I really don't have anyone in particular, but those are some of the places I have been. Okay, what do you think about the new high tone? It's on Cleveland now. Yeah, right? it's on Cleveland. Last time I lived in Memphis, it was on Poplar. Uh-huh. I was surprised to see it move when uh-huh. I drove down Poplar. Uh, what do you think about the new location? I, I, I like it. It's uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's not bad. The parking's a little bit better than the old uh, high tone. Okay. But they, they, they're kind of similar. I think it's a little bit, uh, the one room may be slightly smaller, mm-hmm. uh, but they still have the same uh, uh, same sound guy and all. So the, the quality and uh, the, uh, the ability as far as uh, for the show, mm-hmm. it, it, it's about the same. So I, I still, I, I like it. I have no problem with it. Okay. What's your most embarrassing moment on stage? The most embarrassing moment on stage? Mm-hmm. Uh, I really can't say I have one. You see, <laughs> you see, being the hater, the hater has a built-in, uh, a built-in mistake uh, clause, sort of kind of, <laughs> sort of speak. You see, no matter what happens, mm-hmm. it's fine. Mm-hmm. It, it's a, it wants to, being on stage is a win-win. Uh, it's all part of design. Huh? See, I, first of all, I don't want, I don't want anybody cheering for me. So uh-huh. if I'm doing good mm-hmm. and I get booed, or if I'm doing bad, I get booed. It's a win-win. Uh-huh. <laughs> if the microphone cut off, break, or we're not doing the show, mm-hmm. it's a win-win for me. I don't care if you're being entertain or not uh-huh. I aim to displease <laughs> what's your proudest achievement uh, well I have to say uh, I don't know if it's two years in a row or three years in a row mm. that uh, our school has an award show voted on by the kids and they, they put on they put on during the night okay. and I have uh, for some strange reason I don't understand why they, uh, you know, which is further evidence there's something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. I won most inspiration to teach her two, I don't know if it's two or three years in a row. Really? Well, yeah. Wow. And they just didn't know any better. They don't know any better. <laughs> they don't know any better. <laughs> they love the hate. Man, they just. They embrace the hate. You know, they just don't know, they don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand either. That's good though, man. Yeah. All right, and you're part of a rap group, a local Memphis rap group called the Iron Mike Coalition. That's very true. How did the Iron Mike Coalition get started? Well, uh, I believe it was uh, around February 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to do open mic circuit, you know, mm-hmm. Press Chicago and the complex. And I just kind of was asking, you know, I, I saw these uh, people, these uh, MCs, but I just really never seen anybody doing shows, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I went to Press Chicago uh-huh. to Keaton and I asked the dad, I said, you know, how much, you know, to put together a show. Mm-hmm. She said, well, you know, we, we worked it out. I called uh, legendary, myth hop legend, Fathom Nine. Uh-huh. Rest in peace. Uh, mm-hmm. Fathom Nine. I called him and said, listen, I got this date at uh, Press Chicago. You want to do this show? Mm-hmm. He said, yeah. He said, we should uh, ask MOS and uh, and see if they want to do it as well. I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I'm down. So we had a meeting. Uh-huh. It was me, uh, Fathom Nine, uh, members of MOS, and guy mm-hmm. Mac, uh, brother uh, Scott, and we decided to, if we're going to do the show, we're going to have a name for the show. Mm-hmm. And then we wanted to name the crew that we had. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, so, you know, we named the first show mm-hmm. Knights of the Mike and Turntable. Uh-huh. And we came up with the name, and it's, uh, Fathom and I came up with the name Iron Mike Coalition. Uh-huh. Because the acronym was IMC. It's mm-hmm. IMC. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how that came about. So originally we were like four groups all in one just came mm-hmm. together to do a show. Okay. And now that the show went well, um, after the show, and Janice and Jesse said, "Man, we should do an album together." You know, mm-hmm. so that's how we, we, cause within the group we got uh, three producers. Okay. So they they uh they they put in the beats. We organized the album. From that show, we did a show at least once a month, mm-hmm. throwing our own shows. You know okay. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then uh, we eventually uh, KRS One came to town. We opened up for KRS One. No, no, oh, yeah, we, we opened up open for KRS One. We opened up for KRS One three times. He came to really? Memphis, the Plush Club. We opened up for him there. Mm-hmm. They said if we can get to New York on by, by Tuesday, we can open up for him in New York. We went to New York for a DJ Cool her birthday party. Are you serious? Yeah, Busy B hosted it. Uh, Just Ice was there. Oh. D Nice. Jam Master J Mama was there, so we uh we went to New York, opened up for him. Came back, we ended up we opened up for Dead Prez here in Memphis. Uh, wow. 
Uh, and then later on, we opened up again. For KRS One came back. We opened mm-hmm. up for him. But since from like February 2004 to February mm-hmm. 13, 2004, that was our first show. That was our start. Mm-hmm. And we kind of been going ever since. This is coming up to be our, our 11th. Uh, we just uh, did a 10-year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're coming up and be our 11 year together. Man, did y'all meet KRS One? Y'all uh, met him? I didn't get a chance to meet him. A couple of, a few of the others did get a chance to meet. I, I want, I didn't get a chance to meet him. I, been, I we opened up for him three times. I never got a chance to meet. Him. How do you? Oh my God! How do you open up for KRS One, hip hop legend? Yeah, three, three times. times, and you never met him. Well, you know, he kind of was a, uh, you know, when it was his, he came to, uh, he had, a, he did have lectures. He came, and he spoke before every time he had lectures prior to. Okay. Now one time we did right before he he was getting ready to leave to get ready for the show, mm-hmm. and we was doing a sound check and the DJ put on the instrumental, uh-huh. and you know we was up there freestyling and I know he came back. He's like, oh wait 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 wait, let play that beat again. Uh-huh. Him and my and him and the mighty Queen uh-huh. going back and forth freestyling. It was time. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow, man, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. So cool. So what's your role in the IMC? All right, Mike Coalition. Well, well I mean, uh, uh, I kind of you know men. Me and Ennis was kind of like the co-founders, mm-hmm. so you know uh, it's just uh, it's just my job. I've been deemed the one to make sure uh, we uh, you know we we all get together and, and, and do what we need to do music wise as far mm-hmm. as uh, shows. Uh, you know I, I made the I made the calls, make sure everybody you know who see make sure everybody can be there. Okay, uh, you know what I'm saying kind of organize us. To, uh, get us all together so we can come together. So when we do our, our project, you know, mm-hmm. once once we get everybody together, you know, they they so talented, they they take care of the rest. You know, I just oh, okay. I just get them together. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. What do you not like about rapping or doing shows? The only thing I don't like about doing shows is uh, not doing enough. Okay. Other than that, I don't, right. have, I don't have an issue with doing shows cool. at all. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a mic fiend. I'm more so of a show guy. That I, don't, I don't never, like folks ask me, you know, what studio, man? I don't do much studio time. When I go to mm-hmm. studio, I do four or five songs at, the, at an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, it don't take me too many times and I got a project. Mm-hmm. The only reason I'm doing different projects so I can have something to perform at the show. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, where do your song ideas come from? Uh... Well, you know, I got this song called Pants. Put your pants up, boy. Mm-hmm. It's obvious where that come from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I you know early on when I did a lot of songs. Uh, I you know I I do some conscious type songs. I don't mean to say conscious, but just some mm-hmm. songs that you know they might be talking about some. Uh, uh-huh. uh, but I, I kind of I, I do that occasionally. I try not to do too many of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like to rap. You know what I'm saying? I just like. It's not, in my opinion, is is a, it's it's not enough. Just hop. I just want to mm-hmm. be hot. I just want to rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Now, right. within a rhyme, uh, I don't want. Uh, I'm a rhyme. I'm a rhyme a certain way. I ride the beat a certain way. Sometimes I rhyme the whole way, the whole verse rhyming. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I throw in some stuff here, but anytime I, I do throw in, I, I do rhyme. I'm gonna mm-hmm. throw something in as far as uh. It, it's about some common sense. That's some knowledge. You understand? Mm-hmm. I, I, I rarely. I'm not gonna say anything. You know, too ignorant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, I just don't. It's just not, not something that I want. Okay. Uh, want, want to talk about you know what I'm saying? So, but I just like I like to show. You know what I'm saying? I, I give you a story. Mm-hmm. Give you a story that's funny. Mm-hmm. I give you something that, uh, for you to think. I got a song called uh, uh, "Black Samaritan." Mm-hmm. And you know, call me African American. Flip that. Call me strong Black Samaritan. Mm-hmm. Student of my heritage. Pass me the tools for uh, for you all. I carry. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I I got some stuff like that. I, mm-hmm. I uh, and I think it's necessary. You know to throw in. Mm-hmm. But then you know what I'm saying. I, you know I go back to the hating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hating uh-huh. on whack MCs. Cause you know still a competitor at heart. Uh huh. No doubt. All right. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned your song called Pants. Yes, sir. On that song Pants. You had a quote when you said, quote, I cringe at the sight of a misguided brother, a so-called man, who in some way forgot how to wear his pants. So what's the motivation behind that line? Is it something that you've been seeing around Memphis? or well, You know, I you know, I teach you now, so, you uh-huh. know, seeing these young, uh, I just, you know, seeing these young brothers in school wearing that, and wearing their pants like that, you know, either. Now I see, you know, back in the day, people did some baggy pants, but these mm-hmm. folks wear tight pants and say these uh-huh. clothes don't even fit. They go above your ankle, 
on the top of your thigh. How can you guys that comfortable? How do you sag in skinny jeans? How can you sag in skinny, skinny pants? Stuff? And pants that, that are size too exactly. small. Exactly. If you bag it, now bag it, uh-huh. I can let bag it get away a little uh-huh. bit more. Right. Uh-huh. But if you're telling me you're wearing your little brother's pants and mm-hmm. it's cool, mm-hmm. your ankles showing, mm-hmm. and the pants are on your thighs, how uh-huh. is that comfortable <laughs> for you? How is that cool? How is that okay to wear tight? Sagging <laughs> pants. How? It makes no sense. I, like, I cringe no at the sight of it. <laughs> that you would go and spend money on high price clothing that does not even fit. It doesn't fit. How can you walk down the street? Why do you have big, long shorts? And you have pants at your thigh. Why even put the pants on? <laughs> Just wear the shorts. Right, exactly. Now, you're a man. How a man mm-hmm. does? How can, now, as far as... I had a conversation with a dude. Mm-hmm. He said, "Hey, them, I heard you, you know, said that uh, it's kind of like embarrassing the black people for to be sad." I said, "Yeah, I said that. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, you as an individual, you said, you said, man, you know, some of us got degrees. Okay, you might have a degree. You mm-hmm. might be in a, a managerial position, right? But also, you are influence on these young folks who ain't who got plenty of obstacles. Mm-hmm. There's no way this young dude right here is gonna get no job from nobody wearing no pants like that." Right. You know what I'm saying? You put this man, you giving him a false hope. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You did what you had to do to get where you need to be. Right. But I guarantee you, you want to around them folks wearing your pants like that. Exactly. Now, this young dude down here, he are, his skin meddling already put him behind the eight ball. Mm-hmm. He just don't need no edit, no edit. It's just stuff to give him more mm-hmm. in the obstacles. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, at, I'm at war every day with these kids like this, trying to get mm-hmm. them right, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you, you can do it, but it's bigger than you. It mm-hmm. ain't just you out here. So, you feel like Specifically, when you see black boys wearing their pants, when they're sagging their pants, it's more of a detriment to the culture. I, I mean, I think it's detriment to the culture being for them to have. We, we're not in a position. We're not in a managerial position. We won't mm-hmm. make no moves. You won't call, make mm-hmm. no calls. Mm-hmm. So if you if you uh, if you at the uh, mercy of somebody else, mm-hmm. you need some the help of somebody else. I just it's just gonna be hard for me to imagine this peop this person helping you out. Right. If you looking like that, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. Now you once you get to once you get to a place where you can make shots and make calls, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Man, you can do what you want to do. And mm-hmm. if you're in a position where you can bring other people along, mm-hmm. a mass or number of people along, mm-hmm. man, you you can do what you need, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let's take it out of business. All right. Let's take it out, let's take it away from the job. Let's just say, you know, some kid wants to sag his pants. You know, he's just hanging out. He's just walking down the street, walking to the store from the house uh, because of fashion. It's just the fashion of the moment. Man, again, it goes back to, in my opinion, mm-hmm. Folks doing stuff by design. Mm-hmm. You did. I believe mm-hmm. the radio plays what they play by design to, to mold, mold the mind of our people. I mm-hmm. believe even fashion, mm-hmm. they, they they do this stuff on purpose. They trying to feminize. Man, I don't care. They trying to feminize our folks, man. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? These folks out here wearing uh, jelly sandals, tights. Uh-huh. Tight. You wearing? I might be wrong. You know what I'm saying? I might be wrong. Mm-hmm. But that's just my observation. Mm-hmm. All right, now if you just, but see that person who's saying they're just doing it for fashion, I haven't seen one of these young dudes who only do it. I, when they do it, they do it. They do it everywhere. Mm-hmm. From my mm-hmm. observation, mm-hmm. from what I see, I see him in the school sagging. I see mm-hmm. him come to the football game sagging. Mm-hmm. See him at work. Man, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I, mm-hmm. It's just, it's just hard for me to see how they can just cut it on and cut it out. Mm-hmm. If they think that's what it is, if, right. if it's a young dude. A young elementary dude see sagging, he mm-hmm. think that's what it's supposed to be. Right. If he see it, folks walking down the street, if he see it at school, if he see it on TV, he think that's what it's supposed to be. Right. He don't know any better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he he gonna grow up doing that. And I just, and it's not a hundred percent sure that he won't, you know, advance. But the probability, I don't think the probability is in his favor. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Now your music to me, it has the perfect balance of the East Coast. Boom bap hip hop and that Memphis bounce. Is that on purpose or is that natural? Uh well I guess it's just uh it's just natural. I mean that's what I like, you know what I'm saying? I like I like the boom bap, but I like I'm a Memphis dude too, you know. I like mm-hmm. the, I'm a, I'm a gangster walker. Mm-hmm. I like the boom I, I like the boom as well, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't like too too much boom bap when they ain't got no bass in it. Uh-huh. I don't like too much bass in it where it's so slow I got a tongue twist and all that type of stuff. Right. I don't do no tongue twist man with none of that. <laughs> Just something I can ride, ride to. Um, 
I mean, you know, just a, a, a decent beat, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Is the soul sample dead again? The you, soul, you don't hear a lot of soul samples in hip hop now. Not on the radio anymore. No, not on the radio, you don't. Now, as far as, in, uh, you know, internet radio, underground type stuff, you you, you hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, you know, I hate the keyboard beats. I hate them. You hate them? I, I, I don't like them. It, it don't have any soul to it, like you said. Mm-hmm. To me, I don't have any soul. It's like, uh, like Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre kind of, he, he, you know, his stuff, is, his new stuff is kind of is clean. Mm-hmm. But I like the Dre where he used samples. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? When he, when he did, uh, when he was doing all kind of stacks, records, samples, mm-hmm. and stuff. That was his best. That's so. That In stuff the Parliament, was, man. Yeah. But even pri- I like his stuff prior to him doing the Parliament, uh, mm-hmm. Parliament funk stuff. I like him doing uh, Rufus Thomas and all this stuff. With, and Easy does it. NWA, uh, Straight mm-hmm. Out Compton. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I just I I just like. I, I I like I, I like that uh, I, I like that part of Dre. I just uh-huh. like that type of sound and feel and music, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like a whole keyboard, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. same. It's, it's too it's too uh, too similar. All the songs are same. I just can't hmm. I can't get into it. You mentioned Dr. Dre, N.W.A. Straight out of Compton. I'll be, I'm going are to you see, going to see I'm, the movie. I'm going to see the movie. Going no, to see it? No doubt. No question. I'm, I'm there. I'm thinking about it. What? The, the, the trailers look kind of cheesy to me. The I've, trailers look kind of cheesy. I, now I, listen, I haven't seen the trailer. Oh, I haven't seen the trailer yet. That I'm like, they, oh, they, I gotta go. They see not that. giving it to y'all. You see, the trailer. The trailer is a uh, don't have MC Ren in and all that. I'm I'm hot about the trailer because MC Ren, the ruthless villain. You know, he was mad too. He's mad. I follow exactly. him on Twitter. Yeah, he's mad about. it. I, I follow he, him yeah. on Twitter. He was mad about exactly. it too. But I think it's just a marketing tool to get the people there. However, yeah, I I've I've heard some. Uh, I've I've heard a couple of people who saw the sneak preview say it's good. Mm-hmm. I heard some interviews on the internet radio, folks uh-huh. talking about it. Uh-huh. And just the music alone, mm-hmm. I got to go just for just for the music alone. Really, I just want to see them reenact the live show. I got to I, I just got to see it. I th- yeah, it's, I think it's a must. I go see it. Did you see them live back in the day? I never saw them live. Never saw them. Live. I just saw a video on YouTube the other day of them mm-hmm. live. They wild. They wild. But they were hot. They were hot. Yeah, I was thinking about the music too. I wonder if they're, like, if they're gonna censor the music for the movie. No, they said they said Ice Cube said they went and re-recorded the whole album. The young, the other folks, he said they went through the they, actors. The actors had they re they went and re-recorded the whole album. Straight out of Compton. Yeah, the whole album. That's what he said. He said in the movie, he said these folks went through and re-recorded the whole album. Really? Wow. I gotta see it. You're more convincing than the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I You're did, more convincing man, than the trailer. I might have to go the, see the it. The closer it, it come and the I more stuff I said, man, nah, I gotta go. I gotta really? see it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not even a movie person. Mm-hmm. I hate the movie. But I'm gonna go see this. Okay. The dude who played Dre he said, he said, man, nah, I said, I had to learn how to make beats. I had to learn how to DJ. He said, he had to learn this stuff. Really? Yes. They put him through. They put him through it. Hip hop boot camp. Yeah, he had to learn how to cut and all this stuff. Really? He had to do that. For real? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jason, on the song you have called Still Hating, you said Lil Wayne is overrated. You said that uh, most new school rap gets no love from you and you can't get a record deal because you're not whack enough. You think that's true? That's very true. Yeah, that's very true. I think, uh, you know, you got to be, be whack to get, to get signed. <laughs> well, you, you don't think that Lil Wayne is whack. Oh, man, no, I mean, I, I do think he overrated, though. Really? Yeah, I'm a hater. <laughs> can he rhyme? Yeah. Can he rhyme? Yes, he can rhyme. Uh-huh. However, in my opinion, he got like two hundred. It's but it's, it's the same song. Really, he was killing it though between between oh five and about oh seven oh eight. Can he rhyme? Yes. Yeah, he can rhyme. He was he spitting. definitely can rhyme. He definitely can spit. However, when I think like the Carter three, I like the Carter three. Carter, the folks be telling me Carter one, Carter. Man, I don't like Carter one, Carter two. Mm-hmm. I think. But I still think when he rhymes, it's kind of like the same song. It's gonna it's, be. A, it's it's not gonna that be a, like he's not making like songs, like good songs. He's a good rapper. He's a good rapper. Like he the, doesn't make great songs. I don't think he made classic songs. I can see that. I don't think he made classic. I'm telling another person. He makes hit songs. He made hit songs, but, but he I think like, they like one. They like one hit wonders. They like don't. They don't stand the test of time type. Mm, I can see that. I think he made. He got. I think he can spit. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he made classic songs or classic albums. Mm-hmm. I think Eminem can spit. Mm-hmm. I don't think he made classic songs, or classic albums. Ah, oh. the Marshall Mathers LP. If you go listen to some of his stuff, his stuff is dated. No. Yes. 
the Marshall Mathis LP and the Slim Shady LP. Man, Two of listen, the best hip hop albums ever. Negative. Yes. Negative. Oh negative. My God. I do not agree. I would not agree. <laughs> Cannot, At least the Marshall Mathers LP. You cannot give me to beginning to, put, to end, through you, and through, beat for beat, no, sir, line you for can't, line, you can't, bar you for You cannot. Bar. You can. We can sit down and listen to it, but I, you can't say to me that it's like one of the top hip hop albums. I can't. I can't agree with that. He don't. Eminem does not make my top fifteen rappers. Pop. Eminem. Eminem. Wait, 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 listen, 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 listen. Pop. Pop. Biggie. Jay Z. Nas. Eminem can't make my top fifteen MCs of all time. I said that. I that's crazy. To, I go. I go to war. With my with my with my top fifteen. That's crazy. So who's your top three? My top. My my top. And this this my my number one just became the number one because I sat down. and I realized it, that everybody been denying them, and you can't deny them. The Ooh. number one MC of all time. Uh huh. LL Cool J. Okay. You can make an argument for LL. No doubt. You, you can, can make an argument for LL. My number two, close number two, is KRS One. Okay. Okay. My number three is Big Daddy Kane. Okay. My number four is Rakim. Okay. My number five is the most underrated rapper of all time. And nobody will agree with this, but live show wise and just what it is DMC. Yeah, DMC Cole. Cold. DMC from Ron DMC. It's cold. cold. Yeah. Cold. He's cold, yeah. Ice cold. Yeah. Now yeah. my six yeah. through ten is in no particular order. Mm-hmm. However, I'm gonna go Q, mm-hmm. Skyface. Okay. MC Light. Okay. Chuck D. Okay. And Buster Rhymes. Okay. I was about to really I was about to get up out of my chair if you didn't say Chuck D. If Chuck, Chuck D, D won at least in your top ten. Man, Chuck D my he's top. my number one. Oh, no doubt. Chuck D's my number one. I feel you. All time. Can't deny Chuck D. Top two, I gotta go Chuck D, K R S one. My top two. Number three, I don't know. But my top two, Chuck D, K R S one. I I feel you. Top two. I feel you. All right. What new school rappers do you like? What rappers in 2015 that are hot right now do you like? The 2015 is a good year for hip hop. I mean, Snoop dropped a pretty good album this year. His whole album was produced by Pharrell Williams. Now, Kanye, Snoop, Kanye, Kanye's making music with Paul McCartney, which is big. That's huge for anybody to be doing anything. More with Paul artists, McCartney. There's more artists. Okay, style but, than but, MC, but that's so huge not, for hip hop. That's though. true. For, for, for Paul McCartney to be working with a hip hop artist to that degree, he's he's doing his whole album. Uh, Tyler the Creator had a good album this year. Drake had a decent album. Big Sean had a decent album. Kendrick Lamar had a decent album. 2015 is a good year for hip hop. We've had some, there, there have been some good <laughs> albums. There have been some good albums in hip hop this year. Yeah, man. Folks can't get no love for me, man. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I cannot. I do not like this uh, Rocky. Now, however, Prime by Royce Five Nine. That's the best album best this year. Album. No At question. This year. That's the best hip hop album this year. Who I wrote? Just straight, straight, beats straight, and straight, 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 Prime. What? Eight, nine songs? About nine songs. Prime. Killed it. Killed it. Killed it. I could, Absolutely killed it. Killed it. Automatic masterpiece. Automatic It's a classic. masterpiece. Classic. I listened to it straight about four or five times. I did too. Couldn't I did help. too. I couldn't help. I couldn't help it. it. When I saw you him do the, the studio it. part live, did you see the, uh, the 17? The videos. Uh, uh-huh. the, it's a video where they in. Uh, it's called. A, I forgot what studios, but premiere on the tables. The guy, uh, Adrian, uh, Adrian Young, Adrian Young, Adrian Young sitting yeah. there. Yeah, and, and uh, Roy Spit. He did about three songs live. Cold, cold. cold. I it's mean, cold. That album right there. As far as new rap, new hip hop. You want you want to know like the essence of hip hop as far as like just beats and rhymes. It's cold. That's it. It's no it. fluff. No, it's cold. No sprinkles, straight man. meat. Man, it's all, all meat. meat. K- all meat. All it's meat. The hot. whole thing. Now, uh, I love, I like Action Bronze. Yeah, I like him. I, I like, like him. Action Bronze. What happened with him and Ghostface Killer a couple weeks ago? See, what, what was uh, that about? Action Bronze said something on Sports Nation, uh, kind of derogatory towards Ghostface. Now, I'm going to say this to you. I just saw On Go- Sports Nation? Yeah, on Sports Nation. Why was Action Bronson on Sports Nation? They just bring... They bring performers on there sometimes to okay. speak. The talk sport. Yeah. Okay. He uh he said something, you know, and, and uh, Ghostface said something back. I just went to the Raekwon and Ghostface show here last week at Minglewood Hall. I didn't find out about this show until the day of, man. Ghostface. So Ghostface is cold. Mm-hmm. Ghostface is cold. Still got it. Him and Ray, but Ghostface, them two dudes, cold. 
Cole. Cole. Legendary. Legends, man. Legends with ease. Man, just they put it. Man, rocked it. I'm talking about no who not, ain't no catching hoods spitting. Uh-huh. Right, knowing they still clear, sounding like the album. Mm-hmm. Oh, they off the chain. Cause you know they got th- how they remember all them rhymes. I don't know, but he stays. They, they cold, cold, tight, tight. The one rapping over their words. Then I, the one rapping over the words. words not rapping over the words, man. Just tight. Have you heard the new Ghostface album? I heard. I have not. I haven't heard the new. Oh, one. now his, the new one. The new one I heard. I, I heard about it. Now my you favorite Ghostface it, is Fish Scale. Classic. 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 You got to hear that. It's not as good as Fish Scale. Okay. I got but you got to hear it, though. I heard it on vinyl. Okay. That thick vinyl. Yeah. When it first came out. I got to hear classic, it. Classic. I, I listened to it. to it like three times in a row. I got to vinyl. hear it. I, I got mean, to hear it. every beat, every word. Ray, Raekwon and Ghostface, when it comes to beats, uh-huh. pff, they know how to pick them. RZA, man. RZA was the foundation of that True. Really Wu-Tang. True. Yep. RZA. Now, Wu-Tang, mm-hmm. even Dr. Dre. What folks don't understand, heavy Memphis. Even Bomb Squad, heavy Memphis. How so? What's, right. the, what's the Memphis connection All with right. Bomb Squad? All right, let's go. Let's and go. Dr. Drake. Uh, let's Bomb, go. And for those of you who don't know, Bomb Squad was the production team for uh, Public Enemy. And Ice Cube first And Ice Cube in his first album, America's Most Wanted. Now, let's take. Let's go back to Watts Stacks. <laughs> okay. Watts Stacks leaves Memphis and go to Watts, California right. for the show. For the free show. At the Coliseum. Right. When Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. Hayes Rufus changed. Thomas turned it out. Yeah. Goes into California. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, Dre comes out. Mm-hmm. NWA. Easy does it. Mm-hmm. Plenty Rufus Thomas, Isaac Hayes samples in that stuff. Plenty. Really? You go back, it's plenty. Plenty stacks uh samples. Mm-hmm. And many of them classics. Mm-hmm. Uh uh. Uh uh, do 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 do. Yeah. That uh uh uh, uh easy e uh uh no more questions. Uh huh. Uh nobody moves, nobody get hurt. Mm-hmm. All that type of stuff. Yeah. Plenty uh stacks, right? Mm-hmm. You go, you go uh public enemy. Mm-hmm. I got a letter from the government. It's mm-hmm. Isaac Hayes. Oh yeah. Sure uh, they yeah, got, got they got they got Isaac Hayes in the court in the court song. Plenty of they uh, plenty of they songs mm-hmm. got uh stacks uh samples. Mm. Uh, uh, plenty of uh, uh, just just they got a lot of stacks records, mm. samples in a whole bunch of early hip hop. You know, you got James Brown, but you Isaac Hayes sampled by plenty of good mm. ghetto boys, ghetto boys, good Mama Tricks, Tricks uh, DJ mm. Quick, uh, 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 Born and Raised in Compton, Isaac Hayes. That's Isaac Hayes too. Biggie Warning is Isaac Hayes. Money, money, Memphis. Uh, ain't no half stepping is a stacks. Big Daddy Kane stacks, stacks. Oh man, when I tell you, they had an exhibition with all these folks who sample their stuff. Mm-hmm. Man, stacks on point in hip hop. In hip hop, classics. You know what got me? Uh, about four years ago, when that Kanye and Jay Z that watched the throne came out, that oldest red, that Kanye. oldest red sample. I was like, oh my god, that was already one of my favorite songs. And when Kanye did that one, and they Def Jam released that as a single. I was like, dude, that's so big for Stacks. Like, Memphis, man. That, that song alone brought so many people like to Otis Redding, like young people. Otis Me- Redding fans off the bat. Memphis, the Memphis all up in it. Memphis all up in it. All in hip hop. All in it. <laughs> all right, Jason. Are you going to play a game? All right. All right it's game time. We're going to play a game called To Get To Know You Better. Okay. And before we transition over, we're going to remind people what they're listening to. If you're just tuning in to the J-Bo Show, you're listening to me and my guest, Jason the Hater Harris, the best first rapper in Memphis, and we're going to play a game called To Get to Know You Better. What does the hater love? <sighs> barbecue chicken, fried chicken, and chocolate cake. It's a lot of barbecue in there. That's that Memphis right there. That's that Memphis. Would you rather... Shoot hoops with LeBron James or catch passes from Peyton Manning. I'm well, you know, I'm a former quarterback, man. I'd mm-hmm. uh, rather catch passes from Peyton Manning. Chris Tucker or Chris Rock? Chris Rock. Uh, stand up comedian, Chris Rock. If we're gonna go stand up and go Chris Rock. Movies. Chris Tucker. By default, because of Friday, I'll go Chris Tucker. Because of Friday? <laughs> I thought you were going to say because of Russia. I'd say by because of Friday, I'd say Chris Tucker. 
Chris right. Rock got some bad movies. Okay. The best rapper turned actor. The best rapper turned actor. Mm. Now, because <clears throat> I already mentioned Cube, I'm going to go with Will Smith. When he was Fresh yeah. Prince, yeah. Slip yeah. Cold. Yeah. Can't yeah. deny him. I don't like him rapping as Will Smith. But his Fresh Prince, Cold. He's got a new movie out. It went straight to Redbox. I don't know why, because he's like a box office superstar. But it went straight to Redbox. It's called Focus. Okay. A yeah, new movie but, he just yeah. came, had came out. It's an action movie. Yeah. Man, you got to see that. I heard about it's it. It's good. I heard, I heard about it. It's good. Check that out. Illmatic or Ready to Die? <sighs> now, I'm going to say this. But I'm going to say, right. say Illmatic. Mm-hmm. However... I think it was written was better than Illmatic. <clears throat> no. Yes. Dude, Illmatic is the best album Nas ever made. That's False. the best album he's ever going to make. It was written was Nas' best album. It was written was good, but it wasn't better than Illmatic. It was written was it, better than Illmatic. You know, I read that somewhere before. Some hip-hop publication, I can't remember which one. They said that it was written was better than Illmatic, but it was written wasn't hyped up as much as Illmatic. Very it true. wasn't promoted as true. well as I Illmatic agree. was. I agree. So that's why it got overlooked. I agree. I think It Was Written is better than Illmatic. Really? Yes. It Was Written is the one where he said I got the Sphinx, the gold face. No. It's not the one? Which I one? don't know. It's not Stradamus. It's not Stradamus. That's not Stradamus. Illmatic is one where he did. He got the song I Got Power when he rapped as himself as a gun. You mean uh, It Was Written? It Was Written. I Got Power. Yeah, I Got Power. Is Rewind on that one too? No, nah, Rewind is on like I think... Uh, Still mad. I think Rewind is on Still Mad. Yeah, you're right. It's on Still Mad. But but I got power. I gave you power and Black Girl Lost. Mm-hmm. Nah. But you got halftime on Illmatic. Well, I'm going. Memory Lane. Uh, I'm going with now. Uh, 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 whose world is this? Illmatic. Mm-hmm. But however, I'm gonna go with it was written over Illmatic. Really? Yeah. My top two Nas albums, man. Illmatic, Still Matic. Okay. Then Godson, top three. I'm gonna go. With it was written. <laughs> All right. All right, now we're going to play our second game called Fill in the Blank. All right. The last thing I read was... Uh, uh, some paperwork to uh, get my CPR training. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Blank is the best Disney movie of all time. Uh, 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 I don't know which. Uh, it's Lion King. Lion King. Is that Disney movie? Yeah, that's Disney movie. I'm going Lion King. Right. <laughs> Facebook is. Facebook is a. Uh, Facebook is a. Uh, a shield for a lot of internet gangsters. <laughs> a force for a lot of internet gangsters. <laughs> a lot of internet gangsters on Facebook. Yeah, huh? man, a lot of and uh, a detriment to uh, proper communication skills. You think so? Uh, well, it's a set. It's a relationship setup. A relationship setup. Yeah. What do you mean? What kind of relationship? Man, like uh, there should be no arguments about Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to be understanding. Listen, ain't gonna be no arguments about Facebook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In an intimate relationship or a friendship, anything. Yeah. There should be no arguments about Facebook because it's Facebook. It's Facebook. It's online. It's yeah. not real. It's not real. And don't go on Facebook. There's some communication skills and some tact. Don't be on Facebook acting fool, mm-hmm. being an internet gangster. All right, mm-hmm. express. I know you use your diary to express all your other feelings. Not, <laughs> not the internet. Alright. Memphis is Memphis is uh the best place to live if you want to have a family. <laughs> Alright. My name is Jason the Hater Harris and I'm a My name is Jason the Hater Harris and I am a a below a below subpar MC. Uh a has been athlete <laughs> and a um uh 
aspiring advanced speed data. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jason, the hater Harris. Jason, thank you for coming to the J-Bo Show, man. Thank, thank you for you, taking sir. that time for me. <laughs> Any more comments, suggestions you want to make, Jason? I have one tip for everyone. Don't eat yellow snow. <laughs> also, for anyone who uh, wants to have a debate with me, I'm making the argument and the claim that Dennis Rodman is the greatest NBA player of all time. Really? True. Not on offense. Defense. I the greatest defense. NBA player of all time. Offensively and defensively. I'm you got to play on both sides of the ball. Well, I'm just basically. saying to you, when it comes to when, – when you say Michael Jordan, you don't say – Offensively or defensively, you understand what I'm saying? But he was great on offense and defense. Dennis Rodman was great on defense, but he wasn't great on offense. I don't, I cannot agree with you that he's not great on offense. Now, it just depends on what you value as a basketball player. If you divide, if you value somebody as a shooter, mm -hmm. he's a rebounder. So if you miss a shot, he gonna get the rebound. He's the okay. best re rebound of all time. Okay, he can defend. So you can get defense offensively or defensively. Yeah, it's more than well, one. I value scoring. It's more than one well, way. I think offense. I value scoring. He wasn't a scorer. Well, <clears throat> he was what you needed. Now, let's say whoever your favorite player is. All right. Now, Dennis Rodman can can guard. Mm -hmm. I'll say the two to the five. I agree. He just got a two I to agree. the five. Two to the five. I all agree. Right. He he was small enough to guard a two. But he was big enough to guard a five. That's all right. Okay. Now, so defense-wise, now, rebound, he's the best rebound. He's going to get your rebound. Mm -hmm. If you're saying to me that he's not clutch, it's not true. Because if you miss that jumper, who's going to get the rebound and put back? It's going to be Dennis Rodman. You can't put him on the foul line. He's going to make the free throw. If you leave him open occasionally, he's going to win. He's going to hit the shot. And he's got rings. He's going to win your ring. He'll five champion. rings. He'll, he'll win. Five rings. Two on two. Dennis Rodman and Isaiah Thomas. From the eighties against Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan from the nineties. Two on two. Who wins? Man, Isaiah dog, bro. I'm going with Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna take Isaiah against Jordan? Well no, nah, nah, Isaiah just, against 90s Jordan. Height wise, I don't know now. Isaiah was a dog. Yeah, he was a beast. Underrated. Yeah. Now in my opinion, my my other my other best player in the NBA is Magic Johnson. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, Man, it's hard to deny magic, man. Yeah. The magic code. Magic in this problem gets LeBron now. Magic. I'm rolling magic. Magic yeah, more of a too. dog, more of a killer than LeBron. LeBron, yeah. Yeah. LeBron is like a uh, <laughs> he's more of a Scottie Pippen than mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. I agree with folks who are saying that. But mm -hmm. but however, I'm gonna take Scottie Pippen over Magic over uh, LeBron James. I would too. For in sure. his prime? Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. I would too. For sure. All right, Jason, man. It's good hollering at you, man. Good chatting with you, Thanks, man. Thank sir. you, bro. I appreciate you. Another J-Bo show in the wraps. Bye-bye.